This is Queen Studio Album Review, and we are going to be talking about Queen 2. This is their second debut album, released on March 8th of 1974, and it was released by EMI Records in the UK and Electra Records in the US. They were still working with Trident Studios at the time. They were also continuing to work at Langham One Studios. In August of 73, with their co-producers from the first album, Roy Thomas Baker and Robert Jeffrey Cable, new to the band at the time, and it was also engineered by Mike Stone. This album is definitely different than the first one in terms of the content. It is a gatefold album. They described it as a pillar of Grandois assaultive hard rock that was said by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's not a concept album. Some people thought it was considered a concept album, but it's a it's a collection of songs and it has a loose running theme throughout. The songs are all connected. It starts off at one mood and then it goes to another. There are two sides to this album. There's side white and side black. Normally an album would have a side A and side B, but this album has side white and side black. Normally it's side A and side B. I think that's kind of unique. The white side has a lot of more emotional themes, easygoing folk songs, and then side black centered around fantasy, mythology. It's just very mysterious, this album. It's very mix of songs and tunes. The first side, there are four songs done by Brian May and one song done by Roger Taylor. Side Black is all Mercury. Ow, and it's delicious. <laughs> Okay, well, I shall have one. It's strong. Deacon has not yet contributed because he wanted to be focused on bass. He didn't really feel like he was part of the band because he was just kind of more of the quiet one. He, the other three were more upbeat and he was just, you know, kind of in the background trying to help out and kind of finding his place in the group. Interview. I figured that it's not necessarily the same like theme as the first one boom like it's kind of this is what we are this is us this is queen it leads you on towards a more personal experience because the band wanted to make it clear that you know this is what we are and you can either accept it or leave it at the time they were still you know considered you know lesser than in terms of you know other big bands like zeppelin and bowie like they were just very kind of they weren't really seen as the big talk of the town. London people didn't really see them as that. But we'll soon find out that there were other places in the world that people actually started to see Queen Mania instead of Beatles Mania. A lot of people <laughs> in other countries were starting to treat them as the new era. It was released initially with a critical reception. People thought it was lesser than the other albums, fans did praise it and they did like it. It's a signature sound. Like they were starting to get more into the multi-tracks and the, the overlaying of the overdubs. The vocal harmonies were just, they were overdoing it. They were really pushing themselves. I find it weird how people look at, look at it, you know, as it's lesser than and they don't, they don't think, you know, Queen. Oh, Queen too. It's sad because like, this album is so cool, and not many people would look at it as... Oh wow, this is a great band. For people like me, I find it weird how the, the people look over this album and they kind of just look past it and think, oh, well, that's just an album. This is actually kind of what almost started off their career. The cover of the album, this is a photograph taken by Mick Rock, and he was a huge fan of the band. It, it's a very special photo because it was actually taken from another photograph. They got the inspiration from a photograph that was taken by Marlene Dietrichs. It was a 1930s photograph of a black and white film and she had her arms over her chest, just like Mercury does in this picture. You don't know what to expect by looking at this. It's, just, it's very mysterious. <laughs> So yeah, that's the cover, and then if we flip it over, 
that is the back. So you can see side white. We have procession, father to son, white queen as it began, someday, one day, the loser in the end, which was Taylor's contrib contribution to the album. Side black is all Mercury. We have Ogre Battle, The Fairy Fellers, Master Stroke, Nevermore, The March of the Black Queen, Funny How Love Is, and Seven Seas of Rye. And that um, Seven Seas of Rye was actually included in their first album, but this completed and led you to kind of uh, thinking, oh, what's the what's this song? It's 40 second song instrumental on the first album. Well, now you can actually hear the whole thing. So yeah, that's the packaging. And then, yeah, we can see it's Hollywood Records. And you can see that there. Uh, that's the back. That's the front. And then the, the spine. That is the packaging. And then when you open it up, we have this beautiful photo taken by Mick Rock himself. You kind of get the idea that, okay, this is kind of whole, you know, fashion kind of glamour rock era. Because in the 70s, glamour was big. They were big on that. So that is the photograph of the band there. And then we also have here, it shows a little overview of the um, the credits and the song and the lyrics. And then you can see there that they got John Deacon instead of Deacon John, which is nice because that's his actual name. You can see the uh, little credits list there. They did not want to be known as a band that would be using synthesizers because in the 70s synthesizers were big the record label still was wanting to make that clear but queen strictly were advising against it they did not want that the inner sleeve and this is their first gatefold gatefolds were really big for them at the time they really liked gatefolds so um i don't know if it was big in the 70s with other bands but queen really liked gatefolds this album actually has an inner sleeve, which is nice. The first album originally did, but uh, not the copy that I have. So this is the inner sleeve with all the lyrics. We'll let you guys look at those for a second here. You got all the lyrics to the songs. You got Father, Son, White Queen, Someday, One Day. And the loser in the end. And it's got all the um, the band members who wrote the songs, their last names. And then comes with a nice little logo at the bottom, their queen crest. And then we get on to Side Black. And then we've got Ogre Battle, the Fairy Feller's Master Stroke, and then there's a little um, a little star there to indicate at the bottom here. You can see inspired by a painting by Richard Dad. And then we come back to the March of the Black Queen, Funny How Love Is, and then we get down to Seven Seas of Rye, and that, that is the inner sleeve, and here is the album label, record label, and see, this time we've got side white, which is appropriate for side white, it's and you can see the track listing and then Hollywood Records there. So it's very kind of, it's standard, um, basic, and uh, yeah, overall, just, uh, it's generic. And I would say it's a little bland. It would be nice to have a little bit of detail, but that's my opinion. And then... Side Black. And then you've got all of Mercury's compositions there. So yeah, that is pretty much the album. I really, really like Ogre Battle. I revisited it lately. Kind of started to hear things in it that I hadn't heard before, like the harmonies and the 
actual overall sound effects, almost like a battle going on in the song. You can actually hear like screams, Taylor does these sound effects that it sounds like there's an actual like war going on in the song. And Ogre Battle, little history uh, lesson, that apparently Mercury was big on literature and he actually loved Tolkien's work, J.R. Tolkien. I believe he most li likely read The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. He actually really liked the idea of like ogres and those kind of like, like those foul creatures and goblins. And in the song, it's talking about how, you know, like there's, there's ogres in mountains and that they can see out of the mirrors, but you can't see in. So it's almost like they are in the mountains and then they're coming out to fight. And it's t it talks about, like, the, one of the lyrics is a great big eye that, that focuses in your direction and the battle is won. Like the, like, the lyrics are just so vast. Once upon a time, an old man told me a fable. When the pepper is gone and the soup is caught in the table and the black crow flies to find a new destination, that is a sign. It's Freddie Mercury. It's kind of it's something that he was into at the time. Talking about the Fairy Feller's Masterstroke, that song is just insane. Like, there's one lyric that goes, Fairy Felly tickling the fancy of his lady fair in the yellow, what a dirty fellow. It's bizarre, like, the lyrics in the song, like, it's just weird. Like, the very first lyric, um, the fairy folk came gathered round the new moon shine to see the feller cracking that at night's moon time. Like, the lyrics are just, it, it's... If you look at the al if you look at the art by Richard Dad while you're listening to the song and you look at it really clearly, it's very disturbing in a way. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful art. There are there little persons and there's a picture of like a grasshopper blowing out of a trumpet next to a thief. And the oh yeah, the line is a thief and a dragonfly trumpeter. It's a beautiful song. I think it's a masterpiece. But for a person who listens to it for the first time, including myself, I thought he was lo lost his mind. Like, the lyrics are just insane. I'm surprised that he got away with it. People thought it was a good song at the time, but today it's considered better because it's famous for being unique in terms of his music. It's a pretty crazy song. They wanted their own sound. They were close with this album. A Seven Seas of Ride definitely got them their first commercial success, but it was small, but it was a success and it did get them fans and popularity, but it wasn't what they were looking for. And they were to achieve it soon in their next album. I think that this next album that we're going to be reviewing really changed their career. It's going to be a good one. It's all going to be laid out on the table. I'm really looking forward to that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed going through their track listings for this album. I re-listened to them before I did this. I definitely kind of got a different idea and perspective on it once you kind of listen to it and like clearly get an idea of what is on the album. Then you kind of have a better picture. Give me a thumbs up in the... Uh, um, give me a thumbs up. Please share it with your friends. Leave a comment in the comment section. If you want to see uh, more videos, please um, consider subscribing to my channel. I will definitely uh, see you guys on the next video.